Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part six of my Java video tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about exceptions and exception handling. And an exception is just an object that is created whenever an error occurs, and the exception itself tells you what error specifically occurred. And we're going to go through some code here to explain everything to you. And there's mainly two types of exceptions. You have those located in Java Lang, runtime, exception. And these are exceptions that are thrown during the normal course of the program just running. And for the most part, they are your responsibility, or actually they are your responsibility in totality. You have to catch these. Then you have, and if you don't understand what I'm doing here, don't worry about it, Java Lang exceptions, and what these are are exceptions that are checked by the compiler. And if you do not protect against these errors, the compiler will warn you and will not allow you to run your program. So we're going to see examples of these, though, if that doesn't make any sense to you. Then we have our common exceptions. These are what you're most likely to come across. So you have arithmetic exception. And this just occurs whenever an arithmetic operation goes wrong, like a division by zero or something like that. And another common one is class not found exception. And it's just called whenever a class is called that does doesn't exist. Then you have a legal argument exception. And an illegal argument exception is called whenever a method is passed in the illegal argument. Very, very common. Then you have index out of bounds. This might not make sense right now because we haven't covered arrays. I'm just letting you know what's coming out there. And it's just thrown whenever you try to access an index in an array or a string that doesn't exist. And if that doesn't make sense, you don't worry about it. Then you have input mismatch exception. And this is called whenever if if you're using the scanner method that we've been using here lately, it occurs whenever you try to input the wrong data type. And then you have IO exception, which is also very common if you're doing IO related activities inside of Java. And this is thrown whenever any type of IO exception occurs. And I'm going to give you this very specific example of that. So let's just start here creating our class and it's going to be called public class Java lesson six. Just continuing off of what we did before. And then public static void. And I trust that you know what these mean. Otherwise, see the previous tutorials because I've gone over this a bunch of times. And here is our main program area where we're going to be calling most of our code. So we're just going to start off. We're going to dive right into it. So I'm going to do a divide by zero. I'm going to call this function and it's just going to pass value of two. And I think you know what's going to be coming up here. And if not, you will. So we're going to create our class inside here, public, static, void, public meaning it's available to everybody. Static means that a class can call it and void means it does not return anything. And it's going to accept an integer, A. And then this is where we are going to try to catch an error or catch an exception. What you have to do is put it between braces. So you just put try inside of here. And then inside of this little try block, we're going to do something that is may trigger an error. In our situation, it's definitely going to trigger an error. Print line, and we're going to take whatever the value of A is and divide it by zero. And I guarantee you that is going to trigger an error. And after you do this, this is where all the potential problem code exists. And then you use catch. And you're going to, in this situation, we're going to try to catch the problem that we think is going to occur. And you just type in arithmetic exception, like we talked about before, followed by the letter E. And that is going to be where the exception object is placed. Then inside of there, if you want to print out different things, or let's just say you want to print out a custom error message if somebody tries to divide by zero. Or in this situation, this doesn't have anything really to do with the division by zero. It's just you're trying to perform some sort of arithmetic that cannot be done. Well, you can just put a custom message in here that says you can't do that. I don't know. You can put anything in there you want. And of course, don't forget to put this little dot inside of here so we can print this out the screen. And of course, make that lowercase. And if we run this guy, you can see over here that our custom message printed out on the screen. So let's just see what would happen if we didn't have this. So let's get rid of that altogether. So we're not going to catch the error this time. And let's run it again. This is what we call runtime error, meaning that it's going to let me run the program and it's going to print out an error message. And you can see right there exactly what that error message is. And it's basically saying a divide by zero error occurred and you cannot do this. OK, so that's bad. So let's just change our code back to the way that it was. All right. Now we're back to something that will actually work. But you can also, aside from just printing this error message, which is custom, Java has built in error messages that you can print that are kind of family friendly or just don't look like the whole world crashing down on you. If you want to use one of them, you just type in E, get message, and the little brace is there, and that's going to print out a nicer message onto the screen. Actually, it's not going to really tell you that much, but it's going to give you a little bit more exact than that mess. Division by zero, that is the error in your code. 
And then you could also print the exception name and an error message. And all you need to do there is just go system out print line and go e dot to string. And there's two braces there and a semicolon at the end. And you can see here on the third line it's printing out the actual exception name and then it has the little message there at the end. So the exception that was triggered is arithmetic exception and division by zero is the actual problem. And if you wanted to print out the actual stack trace or the original error that we saw before, let's just come in here and do it here. Delete this guy out. I'm just going to type E print stack trace. And if you do that, it's going to just print out the screen the specific error that we saw previously that's triggered no matter what. See, there it is. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of different ways of printing out error messages or controlling an exception. Now I'm going to show you how to do a bunch of other things with exceptions. Pretty much I'm going to cover everything just like in other tutorials. So in this situation, we're going to need to import a library and we went over how to do that before in the past. And this one, we're gonna be using the scanner object and we're also gonna be looking for a scanner specific exception. And we use scanner to do user input, just like we did previously in the past tutorials. So we're gonna type in static scanner and I'm gonna name it user input. Remember this can have any name that you wanna give it is equal to new scanner. And we're gonna say system in, which is the keyboard again, just like I talked about previously. And there we are now we're able to do user input, which is useful. And in this situation, we're gonna go to system out dot print line, or let's just change it to print so that we don't have space there. And I'm going to say, how old are you? That's going to ask the question. And then we're going to create int age is equal to check valid age is what this function is going to do for us. And then we need to actually create this. So check valid age. We're going to create it. Then we're going to go public static again can be called by a class. Int going to return an integer. And we'll just paste that in there. And it doesn't accept an attribute. So that's all fine and dandy. And then we're going to create our try block again. And here we're going to return to the person user input next int. It's expecting an integer to be entered by the user and it just received that user input. Now what happens if they do not enter an integer? Well, we're going to have to catch that potential error. So we're going to go catch and we're going to go input mismatch exception. And remember we created this guy up here, Java Utility. Well, not only is the scanner tool in there, but also this exception that we're using right here. So you definitely need that to be able to work on. And we also want to put a little E inside of there, which is the object for the exception itself. And then what we want to do is we're going to go user input, because if it gets in here, we want to pretty much flush the previous user input if it was negative. And by putting user input next in there, that's in essence what it does. Skips over what the last user input, whatever the person typed in at the keyboard, and it sort of like skips to the next one. So that's just sort of in there just to disregard previous inputs because we know that the previous input was wrong. So system out print, and let's just say that isn't a whole number. All right, just to be real simple with that. And then in this situation, we're going to return zero. Remember, we got to return something because here we have int. So it's expecting that something be returned, an integer be returned. So then we got to come up here and we got to correct for that. So we're going to jump back into this guy and we're going to say if age is not equal to zero. And then we're going to go system out print line you are age plus years old. Now let's run this guy. Okay, it says how old am I? Well, let's go in here and put a valid number. Let's say 19, which I guess really isn't valid, but it's a whole number anyway. And you see that it just printed everything out fine and dandy. But what if somebody comes in here and instead says six and a half? Say that isn't a whole number. But nothing crashed, nothing went wrong, and that is exactly what we're using exceptions for, or exception catching. So I'm going to show you something a little bit more complicated. I'm going to use the Java I.O. library in this situation, and I no longer need scanners, so let's get rid of it. And all this code is available underneath the video. There's a link to it, so you can look at it. And it's heavily commented, like there's a lot of stuff in the code even that I don't even talk about in the tutorial. And let's just come in here and get rid of all that stuff. I'm going to create a new function and this guy is going to be called get a file. Now we haven't handled file IO and things like that, but we will. And this is just a common error and I just want to go through it. And like I said before, if you don't quite get something, that's no big deal. We're going to cover it over and over and over again. All right. So there's a function that we're going to be calling and it's just called get a file. So here inside of the main function, we're going to call it. And we're just going to say get a file. And we're going to put a file in here that who does not exist. So we're going to call it some stuff on purpose. All right, so there's a semicolon. And this guy's going to call this method down here. So what are we going to do? We're going to create another try block. And actually what I'm going to do here is just to show you 
what happens whenever you try to use a checked expression. And remember, a checked expression is a, an expression that the compiler catches. So the compiler says, hey, you have to check for this potential problem. Our potential problem in this situation is some stuff.txt doesn't exist. So let's say we go file input stream and no we have not covered this yet in previous tutorials so don't worry about it it's just me trying to open up a file so i'm going to file is equal to new file input stream file name so here we we're going to go out there and we're going to open up this file well you're going to see what happens whenever you try to execute something that requires that the exception be checked we're going to run it and you can see here errors galore. And what it's saying, unhandled exception type file not found exception. So let's say try, right, like this. And this is gonna make the compiler all nice and happy about everything here. And then we're gonna go catch. I'm gonna catch this new guy. And file not found exception. E, and we're gonna say system out dot print line. And we're gonna say, sorry, can't find that file and then this guy in this situation is going to run because we caught that exception that it required us to do so it just says sorry can't find that file well another thing is you can also catch numerous different exceptions you can have numerous different catch blocks here so another common error is io exception so let's come in here and let's catch that so we'll go io exception e and in this situation we're just going to go system out this is like a general sort of error occurred and we're just gonna say unknown IO error. Now, you always wanna, whenever you're creating these exceptions, you wanna have the most specific one first, and then the least specific one second. And just to show you another one, if you wanted to use a catch-all ex exception, it's real easy to do. So this will actually catch every single exception. But you always wanna use this last, because you wanna try to solve the problem rather than just giving a vague answer, which in, in this situation is pretty much your only option, you know? You don't want to print this out to the screen for the people to see because it looks like your program's junk then. Let's just say some error occurred. And that's pretty much what it means because like it has no idea what this error is because it catches every single error. All right. Now if I ran this, the same thing's going to show up here because this is specific to the actual error. So this is what's going to print. However, if we had some other error occur inside of here that had nothing to do with any of this, then we might get down to this point where catch the all exception block here would be hit. So this catches every exception. This catches a very specific exception. This catches a less exact exception error. And then you also have finally. This guy will run no matter what. So if you have a finally block inside of here, it's going to run whether things turned out well or not, whether an exception was called or not. It's there mainly for cleanup duty. It doesn't necessarily have to do anything or what it's normally is used for is at the end of your program to close off any connections you might have with a database or close any files you had to open. You know, basic cleanup duty. That's what finally is used for. But just understand if you use finally, it's definitely going to execute whether an exception was triggered or not. Finally is always called. And just to be, you know, cover everything here, basically, let's come up here in this area right here. And let's say you want to just ignore an exception if it occurs. Well, it's real simple. Just go catch. And let's say you want to ignore a class not found exception. And as this tutorial continues, I'm going to show you examples of how this works. But if you just wanted to ignore a situation where a class isn't found, you know, there you go. You just ignored it because you did nothing. You caught the error, but you did nothing with it. Nothing to try to solve it. And another thing you can do, this is only in Java 7 though, this isn't in all the other different Javas. You can actually look to catch multiple different exceptions all at one time. And how you do that, it's real simple. You just put an or inside of there and go like that. So this is gonna catch the class not found exception and also the IO exception because that or symbol's in there and it's going to ignore them if they should come up. And then the final sort of thing you will come across whenever you're dealing with exceptions, and let's just get rid of this all together here is what's called a throne exception. Now, if you would want the main function up here to handle any exceptions that occur down inside of this method called get a file, what you need to do is come in here after get a file, actually right here, and you go throws, and let's just say you wanna put IO exception as a potential exception that it would throw or would occur in this, or file not found, and I just separated those with a comma inside of there. And you just put that before the opening bracket. Now what's gonna happen is if you come down here inside of get a file, and you go file, input, stream, files equal to new, file input, stream, file name, 
and you actually try to execute this, what it's going to do is it's going to hit this point and because throws IO exception and found on found exception is here, it's actually going to throw the error back to main and main needs to be able to handle it. So what does main need in this situation? In this situation, I'm covering everything. You wouldn't normally do this, but I'm just trying to cover every single thing there is. So here we're going to go like that. And then in this situation, we'd need to catch those exceptions. So IO exception E system out print line and uh, IO error occurred. And you could see here after I executed that an error, IO error occurred and it didn't throw an error down inside of here. It allowed me to compile everything. And that was just a way for me to be able to catch those exceptions in main through the use of throws. So there's a whole bunch of things, pretty much everything you can do with exceptions, except for the most arcane, bizarre things. Leave any questions or comments below. Up next, I'm going to be covering object-oriented programming in Java. Till next time.